All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna open up the laptop template. To edit this, I'm gonna click that little pencil and paper icon that you see there. Uh, you'll see that little pencil and paper icon throughout Kaseya. In this case, it's an edit function. In many cases, it's a load function. You'll see that when we do the advanced training. It kind of loads the settings from that line up to the top. But in this case, what we're gonna do is click that one time, and we're gonna open up the the actual inner workings of a deployment package. Now, I said there were two parts to the deployment package. I kind of stretched it a little bit. There's actually seven different steps that you have to go through, but the two parts are what I consider the most critical part of it. Uh, three screens, seven steps that we need to answer here. On this first screen, my advice to you is don't change a thing. Leave it alone. Now, you will see some training and you may have an opportunity where you want to create a deployment package that puts the resulting machine directly into the headquarter company. Okay? We could do that. In fact, I've seen Kaseya training where they said, hey, go put, go create a deployment package for each one of your clients. Now, if you only had two or three clients, I'd say, fantastic, go ahead, knock yourself out. But what, what's going to happen if you have 30 clients or 50 or 100 clients? Hey, you know, you're going to have two ground. or three <laughs> different deployment packages for each. All of a sudden, the screen is filled. I mean, you, you know, you've got hundreds yeah, of different deployment that you've got to keep track of. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. So our best practice using the system for six years now has been let's dump them into the unassigned group. That is the to-be process group. While they're living in the unassigned group, they work perfectly. You could, in fact, run entire Kaseya system with all your machines in the unassigned group. Unfortunately, it becomes hard to find them you know, when you go looking for them. So that's sure. why we like to organize them. But the reality is it doesn't matter what group they're in. There is no relationship between a group and what, what's being done to the machine. The templates control that, not the group. All right, so basically my advice is leave it in the unassigned. I'm going to show you in a little bit how we're going to use the change group function, how to move it out of the unassigned into the Maryland or the headquarter group or just the ABC group if we wanted to. Um, it's, it's about three, four clicks of the mouse, very easy to do. Second screen, um, it's going to come up silent install. Now, if you uh, have, uh, ha have yet to install a package, uh, when you click on that link at the top of the screen, it basically brings up a little web page, okay? So you've got another link here, Windows Laptop Install. You click that one time. It downloads a 1.35 megabyte installation file. Now, this is not like a, a pre-installation file like you see with some software where they download their downloader. This is the file, okay? It's 1.35 megabytes. If I click Run here, Basically, I'm going to get probably a, 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 a UAC box is going to say, you know, are you sure it hit OK? But other than that, there is no feedback. OK, that is on purpose. When we look at this, basically, we suppress the dialog boxes. So when you click OK, you really don't get any progress bar. You don't get any messages. There's nothing that comes up and says that it's finished. It just installs. And the only way that you know it worked is because you see the blue K up here or you go check a service to see that the Kaseya agent service has started. So what's the name of the service? I think you it's know? Kaseya agent. I think it's just Kaseya. It's under Kaseya something. You'll see it listed in there. Okay. Um, so the um, so the idea behind the suppress, look, if you want those messages, just uncheck the box. In fact, on Mac, you must uncheck the box. Macs cannot be silently installed. But for Windows machines, I like silent installation for a couple of reasons. One, if you've got 10 machines in a row, you go to the first one, you know, you click on the link, you click OK, you know, download it, click OK, run, and you're done. I mean, it's, it's like four or five clicks of the mouse. You move on to the next machine. Cl you know, click, 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 run, done, click, 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 run. I mean, you know, 10 machines is like 10 minutes worth of work because literally it takes about 30 seconds to install this. If your Internet is any kind of good Internet, it downloads that 1.35 megabyte package in seconds, and away you go. So you don't have to sit there and go back and, and, and close a, a menu or close a window saying it's finished. Now, quite honestly, that probably would only delay you like 45 seconds instead of 30. So it's really not that big a deal. The real reason that I do the silent install is I'm going to show you in a little bit here how you might be able to push the agent out unattended, all right, without the customer, you know, even knowing that you're doing it. And the last thing you want is a bunch of windows popping up on their machine while you're doing that. You know, that's when you get those panic phone calls that, the machine <laughs> the best.
you know. Yeah. So, so by like suppressing that. those dialog boxes, the only thing that client's going to see is a K appear down in the in their toolbar, and you might get a call on that, but at least they're not going to see all the the windows opening up. All right. Step four is the second of the two parts that we talked about. Right. We said it was the agent and the settings made up the deployment package. Well, step four is actually the settings. It comes up opposite. Four is settings. Five is agent. So here we are. Look what's referenced. We're doing the laptop deployment package. There's our friend, the laptop template. That's what's selected as the gold standard for all future laptops. Now look, no, I, I can actually copy. Oh yeah, okay, go ahead. You're yeah, right, I so. can take any machine. Don't get me wrong. You can use any machine as the gold standard. I could use this XP Pro machine as the standard. You know, all the settings on that machine are my gold standard for all future laptops. That's fine. But here's the deal. I know someday this machine's going to go away, right? Someday I'm going to get a new computer. And when you delete this, all of a sudden this goes blank or goes up to do not copy settings. And the next thing you know, you're installing a whole generation of laptops with no settings on them. And you got to go back and clean it up. Templates don't go anywhere. They don't cost any money. They, they, you usually don't delete them. They stay there forever and ever. And so they're, they're kind of a good anchor to use to copy these settings from. And that's, been the, that's how we work for years. So the templates are pretty much just a dummy machine almost. It's just like a machine that It really is. Exist. Like I said, we, we use the Create button to create a dummy account. In fact, if you hover over the icon, it says it's an agent that's never checked in. And that's really is. You're right. It's kind of a dumb machine that's never, it's never checked in. It's just sitting there. But w until it gets checked in, which it never will because it's not real, it becomes a template. And it's free. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Last screen here, five, six, and seven. Hey, here's where we pick our operating system. So we're going to pick, say, the Windows operating system, the Mac operating system, the Linux operating system. All right. Those are all going to show up. Um, that's where. You, that's basically what you do. Now, let me tell you about step six. Um, I, uh, I I I see people overusing this, Dan. It's not that they misuse it. It's just that they overuse it. The only, only, only time that you need to check this box and fill out like the administrator information okay is when you are trying to install Kaseya at a client's network where the local users are not local administrators okay they're locked down they're not allowed to install software so how do you get it installed you know if you if you go up to a machine you know you kinda of do the drive-by you nudge them out of the way a little bit say hey let me jump in there for 30 seconds you know you click on the link you click out you click the second link you click you know run and then you walk away well, except if they're not allowed to install software, you get an error message saying, eh, you know, need administrative rights to install it. You know, you can't install it. So what do you do? Well, I mean, there's three things in my mind that you can do to get this thing installed. If you were um, having a good day, you probably could have remembered you might have been able to save that package to the desktop instead of clicking run, hit save, right click on it, say run as administrator, go ahead and type these credentials in and it would have installed. If you're not having a good day, you kicked the customer out of his machine, made him log off, logged in as administrator, installed the package, logged off, and <laughs> made them log in. That, that's, that, that's kind of an annoyance, but, you know, it gets the job done. Sure. But here's the deal. Let's say you got 20, 30, 50 machines to do, and, you know, typing that in and saving it is a little bit more, uh, a little bit more work. What you can do is actually build and bundle those credentials right into the package. So if we have the ABC company and these are the credentials for the domain administrator, I can bind them to this package, and then the, I can actually let the end user install it if I wanted to. And it would do its own run as administrator and install the package for you without needing any credentials. So you can actually distribute this to the end user and have them install it, even though they themselves are not normally allowed to install software. Well, now, I do want to make sure you're sense. clear. You do not want to do this to your default packages, because if you... If you change your default package, this will only work at ABC. When you go to XYZ and you try to run the same package, it's going to fail because it's going to try to use those credentials. So you're going to want to create from scratch using the Create Package button. You're going to want to create your own installation. Okay, create a brand new one. And then, you know, you're going to, you're going to obviously fill out Step 6 and give it a new name in Step 7. But if you need to do this, you might as well go back to Step 2 and put it in the right group. Okay, I have no problem with that. So if you're creating your own custom package, go ahead and put it into, say, ABC Group or ABC Headquarter Group if that's what you need to do. I just don't that's like it. the idea of having a whole bunch of packages when the only thing that's different is Step 2. But if, if Step 6 is different, then you might as well do Step 2 and save a step. And save a step.
a lot of steps in that sentence. Okay. Okay. All right. So pretty straightforward. Sense. All right. So let's let's now now that you understand you know these inner the inner workings of, of a deployment package and how the settings get in there. Let's talk about different ways of getting the package installed. And and you probably hopefully you've installed a couple of machines uh, by now. I saw a couple in there. Um, it's it's look it's really easy to install this and the most common and the way that we would do it in a small network and by small I would say maybe 20 or less machines is a manual install we either walk around and we touch every machine or maybe we remote control the machine hey you got log me in or you got another package that you use to remote control just remote control the machine copy and paste the link you know just grab this link and copy and paste it into the system all right and and it's that easy. In fact, it's so easy to install, you can even get your client to install it for you. You know, create a little form email that you send out. Welcome to my managed services. Hey, if you're a laptop user, click here. If you're a workstation user, give them the link to the workstation package. You know, click, you know, click on that. And so what happens is it, um, you send that out to your point of contact, maybe talk them through it. They'll see how easy it is, then let them forward the email on to everybody else in the company with instructions to run this. It's like 30 seconds of their life. You know, maybe it takes them a minute because they got to read the email. And that's well, if it. it's a silent install, they, the, basically they'll click it and nothing will happen. Yeah, I mean, right? and you'll so tell them that. Like you'll tell really them they'll easy. just look for the blue K in the corner in the email. Gotcha. Okay. So, you know, we, you know, we've got an email that uh, has like the screenshots for Firefox and for IE what to expect because it's sli slightly different. Firefox doesn't let you run it. You have to save it, you know, so IE lets, sure. you, lets you run it. So um, it's easier to install an IE. Um, so, so again, don't be shy about letting, you know, your customer help you install this. It's, it, you do not need to travel, you know, 30, 45 minutes to get to someplace and just to spend 10 minutes installing agents. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. So an email to them, I mean, you know, can say it talks, hey, you can IM them the dumb link, you know, and, and, and have it. And they talk about posting it on your website. Now, I say, hold on just a minute here, okay? Let's not post it on our website. But I would suggest that you create a page. Just don't link it to your website. In our business, we created a, a, a standalone page. And we, we did use a URL redirect. We called it Get Client, getclient.networkdepot.com, okay? That's the parent company. And what that does is that redirects, and again, it does a redirect, but, it, but the idea that I want to show you is these are the five links that we use. So if you were to take these links, and again, these links are just this right here. If you were to create a page, a simple HTML, you know, HTML page, you can use Word to create it for goodness sakes, um, throw it out on your, web, on your website, and then just use a URL, maybe it's you know, your domain slash Kaseya or slash client or whatever, whatever makes sense to you. You'll find that you'll use that more than you'll give it to your customer. Because remember, if you put this out on the website, you don't have to log into Kaseya anymore. You just jump to this mm. site and then click the link, click OK, click Run, be done. You know, it's, it's very, very simple to do. So uh, I would suggest that you do, but just don't link it. You don't want Google indexing this thing. You don't want three kids in Siberia trying it out on their virtual machines to see what, you know, what this does. So, you know, you're going to end up with all these crazy installations that you're getting charged for and you have no idea where they came from. So keep it to yourself, you know, kind of keep it as a non-linked non, non -linked page.